Hello, uh, welcome everyone. My name is uh, Szymon Martyniak. I'm a co-lead uh, within the ERG Centers uh, Biodiversity Hub. And today uh, we have this fantastic meeting in which we have fantastic panelists. Uh, we have with us uh, Daria, Ma, David, uh, Artur, and myself, Shimon. And today we will uh, tell you, uh, uh, well, our panelists, our guests, will tell you more about the uh, transgender uh, community in business. They will share their, their uh, experiences. And, uh, uh, well, you will also have opportunity to ask questions, I believe, at the very end. But uh, to tell you a bit more about the ERG Center, so uh, the ERG Center by Diversity Hub is a, a place that strives to uh, deliver uh, workshops and uh, guidelines and uh, uh, many resources in order to make uh, employee resource groups. Uh, so the groups um, that focus on uh, various groups uh, from various marginalized groups uh, to uh, make them more effective, connected and visible. And uh, the aim is to support organizations and uh, create learning opportunities for everyone who's interested in having employee resource groups that work well. Uh, so now I would like to tell you a bit more, although probably many of you uh, know um, a lot about the LGBTQIA plus community. So uh, we have lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, uh, queer or questioning, uh, intersexual, asexual, uh, and all the people uh, uh, who uh, are part of this community. Uh, and transgender is an umbrella term. So, so that's, uh, these are all the people who, uh, whose gender identity expression or behavior is uh, different than the one that is uh, typically socially uh, associated with, with the uh, sex assigned at birth. And of course, like language is, is very important. Lang language creates uh, reality in a way and language changes. And in order to make the language more inclusive, uh, sometimes it changes to actually show that we are more inclusive. And when the language changes, probably it's also good to be aware of, of the current usage of language, for example, uh, how we address the, the trans uh, community and the whole LGBTQIA plus community. But I think, uh, and probably this will be discussed then by our fantastic panelists that it, it's okay to not to know things. It's also okay to ask if you don't know uh, what to do. Um, and if you, if you have good intentions, probably the best way is just to ask. And then probably there are so many fantastic, open, passionate people who will tell you what is the right language to be used. Briefly, I think three aspects are uh, in, in important when we talk about the transgender uh, community and in general about the uh, LGBT Q plus community. So um, the distinction between biological sex so that's everything then that uh, can be, well, that provides, uh, that provides information uh, on which classification can be made. So that's the distinction between biological female and biological male. So that's, that's the biological sex. And today uh, we'll, we have fantastic panelists who, whose focus will, will be mostly on the gender identity. And gender identity refers to person's psychological sense of self, uh, if you feel a man or a woman, or um, uh, actually you don't feel uh, a man or, uh, or, or, or a woman. So everything uh, that is uh, different than in your 
document given you or rather to your parents uh, at birth that falls within the gender identity. And of course, this is probably a bit confusing for, for some people, but gender identity, so the transgender community is, is um, another aspect of the LGBT plus community because when we talk about uh, uh, sexual orientation, as you can uh, see here, of course, uh, sexual orientation is something different than gender identity because sexual orientation uh, is about um, sexual identity in relation to the gender to which we are attracted. So being gay, lesbian, bisexual, straight is a sexual orientation. Uh, if you have uh, any questions about this event or other events, you can contact me. My name is Sean Martiniak at uh, Diversity Hub PL. You can also find me on LinkedIn. But now uh, it's uh, the highest time to uh, invite our fantastic guests and the host, David Wojtyczka, and our guests, Daria Ma and Artur, to tell us more about best practice uh, for the transgender and uh, transitioning employees. Uh, David and Artur and uh, Daria Ma, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Simon, for the uh, pill of knowledge uh, for us to begin with. Um, and uh, I want to thank our fun, fantastic guests, uh, Artur, Daria, Ma, for celebrating with us the Transgender Awareness Week uh, this year. Mm, we couldn't be more than uh, happy to have you. And thank you for being brave and standing up as a advocate of change. Um, we already had some uh, uh, discussions on uh, why we actually still discussing uh, things like uh, sexual orientation or uh, all of the aspects of our, let's say, private lives at work um, and we do it all the time and we know that be bringing true self to work it's what brings the true value and the best value uh, for all of us to grow and for our employers to have the best results for us as a, as a professionals. Uh, today we are here to answer some questions um, how actually employers can support us uh, and you as uh, representatives of transgender people community to be more inclusive. But before we get start, I'm gonna do a quick round of uh, uh, welcome. Uh, together today, we've got Daria from Ababa mm, uh, and uh, Daria, uh, maybe a couple of words from uh, from yourself to, so to say hello to our guests. Mm, of course, good afternoon. So um, I'm Daria Zaremska. Uh, yes, as, as you said, I work for ABB. Uh, currently, I've been there for 10 years. I'm an IT engineer. Um, I'm a transgender woman. Uh, actually, I'm also bisexual. And uh, yeah, what I can say about myself is that, um, you know, aside of that, I'm also a mom. I have uh, two children. I uh, Yes, I'm married and uh, I raise uh, uh, a child with a uh, disability. So I could say that diversity really is a topic that's very close to my heart. And that's uh, why I also want to be an advocate. Oh, thank you very thank much. You. Uh, thank you very much. There's a small tear here uh, in my eye. Um, and I'm really happy to have you. Um, Let's move to Arthur. Arthur, we work together at State Street, uh, so we are in finance field. So a couple of words from, from you. Uh, yes, indeed. I'm Arthur Wada. I'm a transgender man. I'm also bise uh, not bisexual. I'm pansexual and polyamorous. <laughs> so my uh, my environment and my friends are also very diverse people and I'm here to be an advocate both for myself, for them and I'm trying to be for the community in the financial field and in the more social things so I can be this maybe 
this one stubborn guy who <laughs> complains all the time and wants to change everything. Thank you very much. I think that the change starting with the fact that we think that something uh, doesn't suit us and we start complaining. <laughs> so, well, we are here to change. Um, and Ma, uh, our final panelist. Hi, Ma, how are you? Hi, folks. Hi, everyone. So sorry for being late. Um, so can you hear me well? Yes, perfectly. Okay, so something about me. Uh, I'm transgender woman uh, on seventh month of re replacement hormone therapy. Uh, it's uh, a big day for me in business because the first time I don't put a wig, mostly I use it, but today I decided to be authentic, to be myself. I, I think with wig I am authentic too, but uh, it's a it's a big uh, stone for me as well. Uh, I have been working in HR ten years, uh, mostly recruiting. Uh, I was lecturer on uh, un uh, University of Economics in, in Breslau. Uh, right now, I'm more focusing in diversity. As you said, uh, I think we have to do a lot of still. We have to do a lot of work, so I'm really happy to be here with you guys. Um, everyone said uh, about who they are into, so I'm straight, I'm into guys. If there are any nice straight guys are here, <laughs> just contact me. Joke, but it's not <laughs> joke. <laughs> so thank you and be here with me, it's a pleasure. So I really uh, invite all people to asking, uh, or comment what we said, because I really think interaction is important. So thank you. Thank you, Ma. Um, and we know that the coming out isn't like the one-time thing. It's a journey. And for me, as a gay man, it's a journey that started many years ago. But every day we are doing uh, small coming outs, big coming outs. and. Uh, Maybe we will focus on that um, for the for the beginning, because even um, the statistics say that once we are out, for example, at the university, we are going back to the closet when we are joining the company. And as I remember, it's about seventy percent of people who is uh, uh, going back to the closet because they are starting their job. And why we do it? Well, the statistics says because we are afraid of losing a job as it can be treated as something that we are not perfect or suitable. But let's take a look um, how, it, how it does actually in uh, real life. So, uh, Daria, maybe we will start from, uh, from you. How, how, what's your story? <laughs> um, we can't hear you. You're probably on mute. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Thank you, David. So uh, I guess there are three aspects of uh, coming out that we can talk about. Is this, you know, coming out to, to yourself, coming out to, to, to others, and uh, coming out at work. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, my story is that, uh, you know, I had like boiling feelings of anxiety since a young age. I didn't fit in very well. And because of my expression, I was like called um, some, some slurs when I was young. Uh, even when I was six years old, right? So I was, because of that, I was very, like, very, uh, very, very, very closed or in the closet. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was in general, my uh, upbringing was very traditional. And I tried to fit into the society and I hoped uh, very hard that, you know, if I, if I try, I can move past this, these feelings inside me. So, yeah, it took me a very long time uh, because uh, when I was like 20, I met uh, my love, my wife, uh, Kasia. We are 13 years uh, together now and, you know, I was doing quite well fitting in. I, I, I got a great job. We, we started our own family. 
but all the time I was feeling uh, more and more anxious that I'm fooling myself, that I'm not really telling the true story to everyone and I'm not really myself. So I suppressed the feelings for many years until like a very difficult project came at work. And I also finally got my first child and it was a tipping point. You know, I, I, I couldn't deal with the anxiety anymore. I decided I, I can't keep it a secret. And when I, when I started to tell it, it was like, a, it was very, very, very quick. You know, everything that happened, all the feelings that, that have, uh, you know, appeared and I discovered that I can be open and care for myself. So I came out first to my wife and, uh, you know, she's been my greatest ally ever since then. I didn't tell my close family until maybe a year later and the rest of the family, they learned two or three years later than that. So actually I came out at work first, then, then, you know, coming out to my family because I felt it was safer because I knew people around and I knew they were, um, they were tolerant and, uh, yeah, I, I also knew I, ha I have the support. And so I came out at work two and a half years ago. Uh, I didn't start my medical transition at that time because of uh, gatekeeping by my doctors who insisted that I should do a divorce before I start my transition because I won't be able to cope with the feelings of, of getting divorced and you need to get divorced to change your gender legally. Mm -hmm. And... I'm still not divorced, I'm married. So actually my, I still have my old old uh, gender assigned in, in my ID and old name. But I'm, I think I'm doing quite well because of the support that I get from people around and the fact that I, you know, at work I can use my own uh, name that I, you know, identify with. And, you know, when, when, I think it was like three years ago that even before I came out, I contacted HR at my company and I waited months to hear back from them because there was really no support yet in the company and there was no quite clear message from the top that you, you, know, you can come out and be safe. Uh, but once, you know, once they came back, uh, they were really nice and they helped me find some other LGBT people in Poland who are starting to organize a small group, five, six people. And, you know, this group leaves until uh, today, for four years later, we have an ERG and we, we, we managed to organize a lot of actions and build, uh, build the support locally from, from the management. And how I came out uh, to, 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 to other people is I first sent an email to the closest female colleagues in my office just making sure that I have their support. And then when my birthday came, I sent out a birthday message with some special message in it that uh, I would like people to call me Daria and that, that I will transition. Uh, you know, it, it was uh, not, nothing big, nothing huge happened to them. Like maybe two people came with some congratulations. Some people, I felt that they avoided me a bit. Like before that, they would invite me to a coffee or to play, play some games, but uh, it's, it has stopped. Yeah? And I struggled to change my name in the company. So change my email, change the name. There was no procedure for that. So again, like I had to seek someone's support. Fortunately, I changed my organization and I found a line manager who was super supportive. And they, they um, invited me to the team as Daria. They, they spoke with them about transitioning. They prepared them. And I felt they're like at home since the beginning. And the manager also helped me to, 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 to find a way to change my ID. So yeah, here I am. Now, I'm still working for this team, and it's really great. Oh, congratulations, and thank you for, for sharing that story. Um, but I can feel um, I can feel the tension uh, when you're starting it, and I can only see you blooming <laughs> at the end. So uh, this is really perfect, and thank you for, for sharing that. Um, we will definitely tackle a bit more about 
these technical difficulties that uh, mm. that uh, change that that stands uh, in front of uh, transgender people uh, regarding the email. Well, maybe for us it's crystal clear uh, as the organizers and the guests. But um, why is it so important to to have it changed? And why it was so hard? Uh, you were the first one in the company that that challenged the uh, the silos of so, such technical difficulties. And I know Arthur will have uh, uh, the same, uh, quite similar story, uh, but let's have it uh, for other guests, why uh, why we fight so, so hard and what are the obstacles often, because this is how employers can grow uh, and learn from, from our histories. Okay, so, um... At this time, when uh, when I was transitioning, I started to work for a client success organization. I was uh, doing workshops for, for software developers, product managers. I would meet new people uh, almost every, every second week. And every time I had to meet someone, I would have to explain why I use a different name than the one that I have in my email, why I use different pronouns. Basically, I was forced to... To, to, to come out uh, every time I met a new person, right? So, so yes, uh, it, it was super important. And once I, I, I was able to use my email, suddenly there were no questions asked anymore. Why do I have a different name? I could uh, like forget about this, this anxiety of explaining this to, 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 to everyone, but uh, also, what is important is that I wasn't really the first person to change uh, email and the name, because the reality is that uh, many people uh, marry, and when they marry, they change their names to the name of the spouse, right? right. So, so there was a procedure to change the name inside the company and some, some I don't know, uh, tickets in the system where you just put uh, some data into the form and someone, your manager has to accept it. And you're done, but um, like people need to, to to accept that this is nothing. Uh, like this is no, hmm, this is not harmful to to anyone. That exactly. this is this has big uh, like th th this this is um, like very important emotionally for the person who who cannot use the name that they identify with. And it's you know a small change, small small, small procedure that uh, you know is 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 being done almost every day in a large company for for people who got married. Yes, exactly. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you for that. Um, what I can add from from my perspective, uh, because you said that every time you were meeting new people, it was it was instantly your coming out, and mm -hmm. the the thing is that for all LGBTQ plus folks, coming out should be on our terms and on our uh, time when we want it, not when we have to do it. So that's why we all agree. I think that companies should be uh, more helpful here in such basic thing like changing the name in the email. Um, thank you, Daria. And I think we will jump to Arthur to share his view on the email battle <laughs> and your story, of course. <laughs> email battle. <laughs> um, when I started working at Stay Street at my current company, I was at this stage of my transition when I was already in, on HRT. I was in the middle of a process of changing my data, collecting all the documents and stuff. And I really, really didn't want to come out. I really didn't want that. I dreamed about being known as Arthur at once at the company. But I, I dreamed of it being my only name at the company. <laughs> but well, everything was wasn't really perfect because when I was first approached by by my manager about this, and I told her and I came down to her that I need to have my data changed. People from HR told me that it won't be a biggie at all. 
that it was one click and it's all done. And it wasn't one click at all. My manager was so supportive. She was standing on her arms, trying to help me, trying to reach out to everyone. But even with her and HR support, I had to wait. I had to wait until I got my data legally changed. And even after that, it wasn't one click anyway. Before I got my data changed, I changed my name in every possible system that wasn't connected to formal formal operation because I work in accounting. So all the banking stuff had to be as per documents. But after I changed my data, I thought it will be over, but it's more than a year after I legally changed my name and gender market. And it's been a week since I changed my name in the last system I discovered that had my dead name in. So even when people want to help, the procedure is so, so meticulously designed to be hard and unapproachable. So that's, that's the biggest obstacle. Because I really thought that in a company that huge and, and uh, claiming to be so diverse and all about uh, integration, all about diversity and support, I really thought it would be easier. And I surprisingly discovered that I'm probably the first transgender person in Poland in, in my company. And I don't know about other countries, but this procedure wasn't, wasn't something that is just a piece of cake for people in every, every possible department that was responsible for personal data and i think that the biggest issue besides general mentality of people who are very surprised to hear that someone is transgender is that we need people to be to be trained to work with the, mm -hmm. all, all those procedures. Because if we can't change the procedure, we have to learn how to use it. And for me, for like when I started my work job, I was 20 and I was very scared. <laughs> so I was very intimidated also because that's my first job, like a real job in the big company. And I had to raise my hand all the time and say, hey, I don't like what's going on. You know, I'm here for a month and I have things to say. So that really taught me that I have to raise my voice if I want to be heard and respected, even if people are very supportive. And just as uh, Daria mentioned, every time I met someone and met people from my team, I was haunted by this crippling anxiety or of having to decide if I want to come out or if I want to leave it hanging, why I have a different name in my data and why I'm telling them a different name or should I should I lie that there's a like a silly mistake. I have my mother's name in my doc in my system instead of mine. Like, it requires a lot of decision making that is really not at all necessary and it shouldn't be yeah uh, i can only imagine and well as i um as i met you on the let's say very end of the or in the middle of the uh, email battle i wasn't uh, i wasn't aware of the story so thank you thank you very much for sharing that and well um you said about the making a lot of decisions. Um, so maybe bringing up some uh, uh, stories. I'm not sure if everyone are aware of the minority stress because uh, what, uh, what Arthur just described is something uh, that uh, our community is struggling every, every single day. So if you can imagine like the, the glass, let's say the glass, uh, and we have this amount of water Let's add another half 
And this is the stress that is being uh, on top of our regular stress because of such situations as Daria described, like Arthur described, and most probably we will hear something for, from Ma as well, just in a minute. Um, that's why the education part of, uh, of the company and being really um, into the diversity and inclusion um, is the key point. It's not only about, about waving a rainbow flag from 1st to the end of June, <laughs> but as you can see, uh, we are all struggling with uh, procedures that are uh, not inclusive. Um, and uh, even with uh, amazing support from the managers, this is still a huge fight uh, for us. Thank you, Arthur. And uh, we will be definitely uh, talking more uh, about uh, additional points still. But Ma, how about you? I know you are not in a corporate world right now, but you work with corporations. And what's your story? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, can you hear me well again? I yes, would... perfect. Okay, so um, great to hear all stories because I think uh, we showed that coming out is a process. So it's uh, something what we should emphasize, emphasize each uh, time. Uh, my story is um, maybe I will start. Uh, Eight years ago, I started to um, dressing up. So dressing up, I mean, to put woman clothes. And since eight, eight years, I was, um, I was living as a cross-dresser. So I had two different lives, like professional life and the life when I was mostly meeting with the guys, to be honest. To, to be accepted, to uh, feel myself, but I didn't uh, agree in front of me that it's something that uh, can be a part of me. I mean, uh, I didn't tell it to anyone. I thought it's something bad what I'm doing, but from the other, other, uh, other perspective, I was doing it because right now I know I w I'm transgender, <laughs> but coming to, to that point, it wasn't like very easy. I didn't, uh, I didn't, uh, I wasn't looking for any support groups. I mean, eight years ago. So uh, right now I'm more than a year in Poland. I have been living in London for a year and a half and London was... Uh, it was something for me. Uh, I came there and I came to transgender scene there to uh, go to the clubs to meet people like me, like uh, during that time cross-dressers. Uh, I talked with them, I listened their stories and of course met some people who were in transition. So, um, I think more than uh, six months during going to the scene was like very, um, very important thing for me. For example, something what I see in the UK is I met many people around 50, 50ish and they decided to have transition and I was like surprised and it changed my mind because I thought, Oh my God, I'm 30, it's too, it's too late. It's other like, uh, other, not stereotype, but a phrase that people use. Mm, you have to do it when you are young. I mean, like, uh, as Daria said, like, I wasn't sure who I am during all my life, but I didn't have like a big dysphoria. And I've listened too many times that I have to have dysphoria because I'm not transgender if I don't have. So other thing is I mm, right now I know it's uh, very important to listen good stories and uh, to have a good like doctor who support you because still in Poland in front of some specialists, I mean everywhere, but I have Polish experience, you have to lie them 
that you felt it all life because on the other hand they will not help you with with the procedure so um it was like for me to natural to come back to poland it was hard decision because all people around said like you're in the uk so you can feel here like who, who you want to be or who you are not you want to be who you are and i said like yeah but i want to do it like legally in my country so i'm really happy to be here um with you too because i think we uh we um we can do it like abroad but we have to show to our system that um that we uh, are here and we have some changes and we want to be authentic with you, not just lie, what do you want to listen? It's it's another story, uh, as I said, like some uh, specialists want to hear that we always be like that. So uh, in my case, it wasn't like that. So I want, I want to talk it about it pub in public because I think it's important. Uh, I don't want to lie that always I felt like that. Mm, so uh, when I started my transition, uh, I mean medical aid transition on May uh, this year, but one month ago when I was, I, I'm living in Krakow, uh, when I was working from a co-working called Mrowisko, I felt they're safe and I came out and said, please use she, her pronouns to, to me. And to be honest, I want to feel how I feel with that pronunciation. And uh, after I decided to came out on LinkedIn and I said about myself, um, and I, I was really happy to see so many positive like messages, supportive messages. Of course, some people say like, it's not okay or something like that, but I felt in front of myself that I'm ready. And uh, I think it's, it's uh, important. I started my psychotherapy um, more than a year ago and it helps me to be stronger. I always had uh, friends, supportive friends, but I lose some contact. I mean, um, sometimes maybe of, of, of my, of, again, I would say my decision, but you know, it's me. Uh, some people, I think for some people, it was too much because they didn't know how to, um, how to, uh, how to live with me. So, yeah, I think, um, yeah, if you have any specific question, yeah, please. <laughs> Um, thank you, thank you very much, Ma. Uh, well, I'm following you on uh, on LinkedIn, and uh, uh, I'm really, really happy to to read all of your posts uh, because you are presenting um, how the world should look like. To be proud of yourself, as all of our uh, our panelists today, um, and I know that for business. Um, you had some stories to share uh, regarding how business reacted, um, but maybe to not focus on the bad sides. What what was your best uh, business um, situation that uh, happened to you after you announced that you are transgender on LinkedIn? Maybe mm -hmm. some uh, inspiring story. Uh, so maybe from Facebook because I'm. Uh... I have many uh, business contact on Facebook. It was my strategy because I have my own company since uh, five years ago. Mm -hmm. And if you want to see, it's another announcement. If you want to see my story, uh, I'm in transition, more private things. You can follow me on Instagram. It's Webskare Kruterka uh, when I'm showing my story. But according to Facebook, uh, one of the, it's okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's LinkedIn and Facebook together. So one guy who is following me on uh, LinkedIn, uh, he is uh, my contact on Facebook as well. Uh, so he 
know that uh, I announced that I'm transgender, I'm in a process, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and one day, it was like more than a month ago, he just contacted me via Facebook, via Messenger, and he said like, Ma, I would talk with you about my friend. I think uh, he used pronouns he. He, he would like to um, be in a process, but uh, I don't know what I should do. So we had phone conversation. He, of course, in, in a secret, uh, explained uh, some, um, some things about the life of, of the person. And he said like, um, it's uh, one of the best friends of him, so he really wants to support, but he doesn't want to be um, push him. So he said what he has to do. And we had like three or four conversations. And uh, of course, I said, like, if you want to help him, um, he should feel that he wanted support but um, you can ask him about some things. Maybe uh, th that person, I, I can use the name, so uh, that person will uh, start to talk about needs. And uh, like two weeks ago, I saw a post of uh, that guy because after I talked with that guy, uh, and he said, like, he's living abroad, but he's thinking about transition process. And he put, like, uh, pictures with, uh, with uh, woman clothes. Uh, and he's, like, C-level manager in a big company abroad. And was, uh, it was a big step for him because he was, uh, he was the first thought was, like, I will lose my job even I'm working abroad. Uh, but he said, like, he preferred to be, he still use um, pronunciation he, but uh, decided not to have medical transition, but uh, showing to the, la to, to, to the world uh, what, what he feels and what kind of clothes he would like to um, put. But uh, one very sad thing, it was um, fr from the guy that contacted me, that even in Warsaw, um, that guy who put woman clothes, he didn't feel comfortable because he doesn't want to put wig. It's other thing, like sometimes people said to me as I started, you have to put a wig if you want to be a woman because you don't have like long hair, you have to do it. So um, the guy was stressed because he put like just woman clothes without, you know, makeup, without wig. Um, but happy to hear that my story of another person and I, I'm really optimistic. So I think if we will talk about it more, we will change the world together. So the last announcement, if someone here wants to share that we talked about the topic, maybe without specific things, but share to your network on Facebook, on LinkedIn, maybe you can help some people to be more open and we can support together another person. Thanks. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma, for the story. Regarding uh, sharing um, today's meeting, um, this meeting is being recorded, as mentioned on the very beginning. So um, it will it will be super easy for every of you uh, to to share it if you find our uh, our discussions valuable. But I do so, so uh, we will definitely uh, leave you the information how to how to get. Uh, recording session. Uh, once again, thank you, Ma. Um, and uh, you already shared how the advocacy works and how we can be stronger together just by supporting each other and uh, sharing our personal stories. Um, Arthur, I know you started your story with uh, uh, with the information that you were scared of uh, coming out as a professional. Um, 
did anything change from from the perspective where you are currently? Do you have any words of wisdom uh, to to people who actually to yourself from from the beginning of the process? The first thing that comes to my mind. <laughs> start the therapy earlier <laughs> because uh, when I started transitioning and when I started my job I even in my worst nightmares I didn't dream about sharing my story on the conference call with all the people uh, when I when I started I was all about stealthy living I was all about uh, living a life as a cis person a like cis person and it all changed throughout two years of my life that I was working really hard on my internalized transphobia and my internalized issues I had with myself. And all I can tell to, to, to the people, to young people and not uh, to everyone that networking with people who understand you, people who are like you, people who love and support you, and therapy are two things that can really change one's life. And with this support, with friends, with loved ones, you can really be able to push through a lot of uh, professional difficulties. Because if not my friends, my partner, I wouldn't be able to uh, talk to you openly at all. So definitely people and healing are two major things that allowed me to share my story and to be into sharing a story at all. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the brave, bravely standing for, uh, for your, actually your rights and your life. And I couldn't agree more when it comes to therapy. Um, I think we would live in a better world, like the Jetson ones, if every people would go to therapy. Yeah, we would be living the future. <laughs> um, and Daria, going back to you, it was, it was a while where, where we're speaking. Um, I wanted to ask you if, uh, if there's any advice that you can give uh, to, to others. Or, or share a story that, that actually inspires you uh, to, to be here with us today. <laughs> sure, sure, David. So if it comes to advice, there's for sure one that I would tell myself in the past, like uh, don't be apologetic. Don't, you don't need to explain yourself and explain your existence. Like just be yourself, give people time to adjust uh, if you see that they are good willed, right? And um, yeah, I, I, I think I spent too much time trying to explain to everyone why I'm transgender, what does it mean, why I'm uh, not a bad person, and you know, yeah, the, 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 sometimes I didn't really. Uh, respect my own privacy, right? I shared, uh, I shared too much. And uh, I think this, uh, this the, the cause of that for sure was the anxiety, right? Fearing that I might be misunderstood by other people, especially since there's so many stereotypes about, uh, about uh, transgender people. If it comes to advice that I would tell to, to, to other people, for sure find allies, colleagues, like make sure there is someone who will support you once you come out. Sometimes, you know, you don't have anyone close, uh, you know, a friend, you might fear to come out to friends, but you can search for, for, for support online. And uh, there are some great, for example, Facebook groups where you can connect to other transgender people, hear their stories, uh, meet with them. So yeah, that's, uh, that helps a lot to, 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 to have like, feeling that so, so someone else is also going through this journey with you. And if you come out at your company, make sure that you, uh, you know, that your manager supports you. If not the manager, at least, you know, you have the support from HR because you might need it uh, in some situations. So if there, there's no procedures, like 
yeah, try to try to make sure you have an ally inside the company as well. And uh, about like, okay, stories that inspire me is for sure, like um, if it comes to the coming out of the career, I, I was not really, like I was super afraid to come out uh, even when I realized uh, I'm, I, I'm transgender. And, uh, you know, I, I work in IT and it's, especially in Wuch, it's a small world. Everyone knows each other. And uh, there were always, my colleagues were always speaking about some other transgender girls who have come out. It was always a topic to, to like s- s- something uh, different to talk about. Yeah, so, so I would hear stories about um, some trans girls that they work with. And, you know, sometimes these were jokes, but mostly I must say this, uh, the, the, these were inspiring stories because uh, like the, the, uh, for these stories, I, I, I somehow learned that there are other people like me. Uh, I found those girls. I know that they are doing very well after coming out. And you know, seeing them being so so open that that helped me a lot. And like just to convince myself that I will also be fine when I come out. And the best thing that that did come to me after I came out, uh, a long time after I came out, I learned there was another person in my company who was uh, who is transgender and. Uh, they actually found my story to be inspiring, yes, because they they heard some stories from their from their colleagues about me, and you know, um, yeah, that that inspired them also to come out, and yeah, that's a great thing to hear. And I'm friends with that person now. <laughs> so, thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Daria, and. What came to my mind when when you said that uh, uh, you apologized too much? Um, there is a, I saw this uh, fantastic movie when uh, Electra from uh, from uh, series Pose. I think this is the her speech uh, in uh, United Nations, and she says the these great words: "I don't ask for your respect; I demand it." And yeah, this was so powerful to me. And this resonates with all of the things that you you just said. Um, And yes, we demand the respect, we demand our loss, and we demand to uh, be accepted for who you are without any um, apologizing. Mm -hmm. If I can add something just very quickly, Uh, I think like, also to connect to what Ma said, I think in general, it's very important to be proud. And uh, to me, it also helped a lot to go through psychotherapy when I was uh, you know, uh, starting to transition. And it helped me to build this, uh, this confidence and to, to somehow set some borders. So yeah, uh, it really helped me to find this this pride in myself and and the courage and yeah and to to do it demand the respect so it's like wow. having the support is super, is important thank you uh, and i'm really glad to hear uh such an inspiring story um in the meantime because i do have another question but um we are definitely open for for question from uh, from all of our participants so uh, it's easier for me to monitor the chat so you can uh, send the message directly to myself or to the panelists um, or you can raise uh, raise a hand and, uh, and join our discussion so this is the information for you and yeah I've got one uh, one more question, because we are here to ask why or how, actually how, the employers can support um, transgender uh, employees at the workplace. So, uh, Daria, maybe to give you some uh, some uh, little break, I will go to back to Ma with that question. Ma, if you can imagine a perfect company what would be there dedicated to transgender people? What's, uh, what's 
in your uh, biggest dreams for from that perspective? Mm. Um, I think supportive during the process, so I can I can uh, say from my experience. For example, one month ago, I had uh, re Apple's um, Adam Adam's Apple removal, and it's one of the things that you you don't have to do during the process, but uh, many people are doing. I'm talking about transition male to female because I don't have experience from <laughs> from another side, and it's totally different. To be honest, when we talk about names, when we talk about issues, it's it's totally different. So it's it's another thing that we have to uh, remember. Uh, as Daria said, she she has totally different story. Um, so um, yeah, <laughs> uh, when we talk about, uh, I think small things um, are important. So for example, I'm I'm working with companies, so uh, I'm advising their, um, for example, during the recruitment process, put uh, in a question questionnaire when they have applying questionnaire. I'm talking about it put like pronunci pronunciation because uh, from transgender people, from queer people, uh, it's important. Maybe from straight people, from perspective of straight people, it's not so important. But as we can see here or on LinkedIn or in, I don't know how to say in English, in Stopka, in Polish, in our in email. A footnote. <laughs> in a footnote. No? Yeah. <laughs> Um, people put uh, the pronunciation, which helps uh, the people who um, doesn't have uh, standard pronunciation. So, for example, I think put in, uh, to choose your pronunciation, it's uh, it's important, uh, and it can be um, it can it can be helpful for the people, as I said, with not. Uh, mm -hmm standard uh, and it can be a starting point for the um, for the for the um, for the conversation I've, unfortunately uh, i i've talked with uh, some transgender people who said like uh, if you don't have like for example i do have still male id and many com company will reject you because you your um, data, it's not, um, you know, they don't see, for example, you feel a woman and you have male documents. So for the many companies, it's still a big deal. And even they have really good candidates. So sorry, I don't understand it from, from the recruiter point of view. It's for me, um, yeah, illogical. Um, but many people feel uh, feel uh, not um, <clears throat> safe to say uh, say that they are on a pr transition process. So um, <laughs> okay, um, trying to answer your question. So um, say to uh, firstly employees because I believe the most important is employee perspective that we are LGBT friendly. Uh, or transgender friendly and show uh, examples of the things that we did. For example, uh, to put information, if you still have like ID for um, the, the sex that you don't feel with, we will help with that. It's not a problem for us. As you said, like, uh, I know in a big corporations, it could be a problem, but in a small companies, Okay, I understand from the HR point, we have to have um, agreement for, you know, the, the data that you use formally. But from another point of view, it's for me like to spend some time with person and talk about it. It's just about time to be like person oriented. I, I, I truly believe the conversation is a key for everything, but we have to... Uh, spend some time and show someone that we can do it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think that the words you said as uh, one of the last ones, uh, be the person oriented uh, is one of the key uh, takeaways. Uh, 
for for us uh, because yeah uh, even in uh, the small company or the big company we are not a number we are a person and as we showed you today we have so many different stories and so many different backgrounds that sometimes we are out of the procedure and i think this is a compliment for us uh, to be out of the procedure um, but we've got a question from piotr actually dedicated to arthur regarding the procedures so uh it was put on the chat um, we should focus the question is if we should focus on changing our internal procedures and policies rather than finding a way how to fit into the procedures well i do have my uh, my personal answer but as the question was directed to arthur arthur the floor is uh, yours to uh, to give us some uh, some info from your perspective as far as i am concerned of course the perfect answer is to change the procedure Although fitting into the procedure is probably much easier than changing it for the entire company. But uh, when it comes to general things that would certainly help trans people and generally gender non-conforming and non-heterosexual people, that uh, asking about preferred name and pronouns should be a default thing, even for cisgender people, everyone should be able to put their preferred name and pronouns in their uh, in the job questionnaire and their CV in this uh, form that we submit when we apply for a job. It should be default. It like should be something so obvious. No one would, uh, after some time passes, no one would even ask a question why it's done. It should be obvious, especially the same thing when it comes to just as Ma mentioned footnotes putting pronunciation and pronouns in footnotes that should be obvious it's so much easier for everyone it's much easier when you know how to refer to the person especially in the multinational uh, environment even when someone is completely cishet they may have a name that is foreign to us and we don't know how to read it it's easier for everyone. And I'm always um, astounded by the fact that it's so controversial for some people. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Arthur. And my answer would be quite similar when it comes to procedures. I know the procedures are quite tough to be changed, but well, mm, it's not impossible, so definitely we can try to fit in, but in the same time we can fight uh, to change them to be more inclusive, and that would be uh, the way I, I would approach uh, the change. And yeah, I remember one of your first uh, first emails when we get acquainted in the company was uh, you uh, mentioning oh the um, the pronouns in in the email. I couldn't agree more. This is so simple and easy and in the same time it shows that you are an ally but in the same time for as you mentioned the different names from uh, uh, from other countries especially for example from uh, from india uh, i am really often um, questioning the the person if I'm not speaking to her on the call, on the phone, because I am not sure um, how to approach uh, the person, so it would be definitely very very easy. Um, Daria, back to you with the dreamed company. What you would <laughs> like to see from the employer to to feel that you belong in the in the in the place. <laughs> Sure, I have some strong opinions about that. So mm -hmm. Sorry if I get again into a very long monologue, but yeah, there are, there are many ideas. Um, I would start from, from the beginning, which is like onboarding new employees and communication. So I think that it's one thing is like for, for internal needs, it's important that the top managers in the company, they are uh, clearly uh, sportive, that the, the the message is clear that we that we 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 support LGBTQ plus people we support diversity 
when this comes from the top of the company, this starts a conversation in the company. There's a change for sure, but at least the, 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 the strategy is, is known to everyone, right? And uh, what we did in ABB, uh, this really great is that in every job, um, job offer, uh, we have this, this line, actually the job offer starts with a header that is like the, the, just one paragraph of describing the job. Then the second paragraph in the job offer is that in ABB we value diversity, we see, support LGBTQ plus people, people of any gender, uh, ethnicity, religion. So, 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 so we, really, we really emphasize that to every candidate in the, uh, to the company that this is the company value. And a second thing that uh, I think is necessary is that when you onboard new employees, there's always trainings, there's always materials shared with the new employees, including those materials, the links to the company diversity page, maybe have someone to come to talk about diversity and for sure, uh, for sure, include information about ERGs. If you, if there are groups inside the company, share contact to those groups, so so, so new joiners can quickly connect with some people. Uh, yeah. So the second thing, for sure, uh, like from the standpoint of a um, transgender person, I would try to introduce introduce as many unisex uh, restrooms as possible at least so like one restroom per floor or area where like there, there, there's uh, quite often some single person uh, restrooms like uh, for example a restroom for people with disabilities yes and uh, it does not uh, harm anyone to put a sign on it that it's this, this is allowed for both both genders yes because um, uh, like when I started to come out, like my, my, my first, my expression was really gender ambiguous. I was shy. Uh, I, actually, I feared to go to any of the restrooms. Yes, it was uh, hard to fit in. And I would really seek this kind of uh, restroom to just, just go there and be, feel safe. Yes. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think this is important because this is such a basic need. <laughs> and you should not spend time thinking about um, which restroom do I go to next? Will someone shout on me or not? So yeah, uh, this is important topic. Uh, the next one is for sure, allow people to set their own names in the, let's say in the communication tools, IT systems. For sure that's important. You already talked about that, so I will not go into the details. Um, I, uh, I think it's important to build culture of using pronouns in the footnotes and maybe introduce like a form one where everybody can put their uh, pronouns in it. And for example, um, you know, display them in Zoom, in Teams, just so it's, uh, you, you avoid this, um, the need to, to, you know, to communicate it uh, every time and make, people make, make life easier for people yes to communicate and um, yeah for sure make sure your your procedures your uh, job titles they don't use gender specific terms that's not uh, important just for transgender people but for gender diversity in general for you know women to to, to feel comfortable to aspire to some jobs and yeah, I, I, I think you should really review company procedures to make sure you don't use gender specific uh, uh, language. Um, yeah, I, I think these are, uh, let's say the basic, and maybe one another, sorry, is uh, about dress codes. Because I, I think uh, dress codes are too often also like referencing gender stereotypes images of uh, you know women in dresses uh, and uh, like don't try to enforce the gender stereotypes try to appeal to people's sense of tidiness that you you know you keep your appearance um, tidy and uh, you respect let's say the, the the other people yes and don't try to force people to, 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 to wear any specific uh, kind of uh, attire, yes? Because this also makes hard to 
you know, to makes it makes it hard to to express yourself uh, freely. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, great summary. And yeah, I was actually waiting for the points uh, regarding the dress code uh, because we've got a discussion on one of the groups regarding the dress code and how companies approaching the dress code because, well, all of, all companies are some recommendations how we should uh, look, uh, what we should wear. Um, and it's not that hard to put the list of things like trainers or uh, jeans with holes on the list on of things that you shouldn't wear to work as a professional. Uh, but on the other hand, what is fully accepted? And there's no need to put gender anywhere because as we all know, gender is not something we assign to clothes. Binary people are just immune to dress codes. <laughs> Uh, definitely. Thank you. Uh, well, we uh, do have some comments uh, on the um, on the chat. So let me go uh, through them uh, really quickly. Uh, so. Aga has a comment when when it comes to being supportive too much. Uh, and are there any topics that we should not ask about, discuss with uh, trans people so they don't feel uncomfortable? Um, so I think all of you have uh, have any comment um, or on that. So I'm opening the floor. Ma, Arthur, Taria, who would like to to answer? If are there any topics that uh, that shouldn't be brought uh, in a conversation? I think a basic rule should be that if one wants to ask an, let's say, more invasive question regarding someone's identity or transgenderness, they should ask if they are welcome to these questions. Because it's for me, it's a simple thing to ask. Hi, do you feel comfortable if I ask you a personal question and when I'm not in the mood or just don't want to talk about this, I can just stop it before it escalates into something very uncomfortable. <laughs> yes, thank you, Arthur. Couldn't agree more. Um, Ma, Daria? For example, I feel comfortable to share my story because uh, I'm extrovert and uh, and extrovert, super extrovert. <laughs> um, what, what, what I heard is uh, many transgender people are afraid to come out because they, um, they are prepared for questions, as Arthur said. Um, so I think mostly people don't have uh, bad intention, but they don't know how to how to ask, how to be polite. Um, but from my perspective, you know, uh, to um, to um, explain each other. I mean, like mostly maybe I'm talking about my Tinder experience. I think I will write book about it or have TikTok or YouTube um, because, <laughs> because uh, people, for example, in my case, can't understand. I mean, mostly guys, sorry, guys, straight guys, uh, can't understand my name is Ma and full stop. They, in many cases, start to asking Maria, Martina, and all, all, uh, all options, but from my perspective, I didn't, uh, I didn't um, decide about names. So they give me examples <laughs> that I can think about it. Um, but sorry, um, a little bit like. <laughs> um, so what was the question? <laughs> um, the question was. Uh, <laughs> what to do if the uh, if the questions are being how to approach people uh, mm -hmm. transgender people with the questions mm -hmm. to not be too much of an ally let's say <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah. So Daria, I think she she can answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know if I can just. Uh, yeah, I, I I can bring also a few anecdotes. Like for sure, there are some some questions that have hurt me when I was early in my transition. So, for example, like um, some people, okay, people knew me for a very long time before I started to transition. I worked there for six years and people knew that I have, uh, I have children. And someone asked me, for example, if, if I really want to do that, if, uh, if uh, can I, cannot I, can't I do it at home and like keep it to myself? So that my family doesn't, you know, get uh, ruined. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty pretty invasive. So one thing: don't make assumptions. Trust the people. Like if someone tells you, "Okay, I'm Daria, I'm Ma," or like "I'm a woman," just just don't question it and uh, try to. Uh, Try to understand. I think what Arthur said is very, very important to 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 ask. If, uh, can we can we speak about something private? Can I ask you something about your transition? So start with that for sure. And for example, another thing, like early in my transition, like uh, I would try to really also like express my femininity. And one day. Okay, I, I would put on like makeup and uh, and try to and some and some feminine clothes. But one day I came to work without makeup and like more casual. And someone asked me if this transgender thing is still actual or not. So also done like yeah, this again. This was this, this was too invasive. Like. Um, Again, we are like putting some doubt into someone's transition and not trusting what they told us. We don't make our expectations um, about someone or about the transition. Don't make it, uh, don't force it on, on, on the other people. Yeah, so don't expect that a transgender person, the first day after they come out, they will come to work and look totally feminine, act totally feminine, like, uh, or masculine, yes. So, yeah, um, I think it's uh, a lot about uh, trust and giving people time to, to, to find themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Daria. Um, I hope you are hearing less and less such invasive questions nowadays, or you are <laughs> maybe uh, invasive questions bulletproof. Um, <laughs> somehow what would i would ask uh, because well um i find myself in this position that sometimes i'm maybe also too curious um and uh, the basic rule about is there any question okay to ask is if i would like how would how would i feel when someone asked me this question so i'm just verifying the question with myself if is it okay mm, to ask or not on many of the topics. Um, okay, actually we are um, slightly coming to the end of our panel. Um, so the, the question I would like to ask to our panelists, if there's anything you want to conclude with, because we've got uh, last couple of minutes and all of the questions were, have been asked. So maybe, uh, some uh, some notes from yourself to for goodbye anna kostetska is raising her hand so uh, anna join us uh, with our discussion <laughs> thank you i have a question that i'm often asked and i often wonder how to answer so what would be your advice for a manager who has a transgender employee who wants to transition, what would be the, the best advice to the manager to support the employees? And you shared such a great examples from also your experience. So I think it would be helpful to hear. Okay, so from my perspective, um, I would, um, for, for, for sure, I would try to listen to the employee to, to ask what are their expectations 
about the transition because there is no one clear way to transition. Some people don't want to transition medically or legally. And yeah, just uh, ex ask what to what what do they expect? What kind of support they expect? And uh, yeah, try to understand the needs. And for sure, connect with uh, with HR to see what's uh, what's possible to support the person to, for example, change their data, um, or maybe to communicate this uh, to their team. Some people might need uh, some um, some help to, to to communicate that. Uh, so yeah, and allow people to define themselves. Don't don't force anything. Then take it take it uh, take it slow. If uh, like don't don't force next steps, just wait for the person to be ready. Thank you, Daria. Um, I see uh, I saw Ma nodding her head. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, any of our panelists want to add something to to that recommendation. I was to be a perfect manager for myself from two years ago. I would definitely ask a person if they want me to tell others because taking this uh, this wave of coming out from somebody's shoulder especially if they are new in the workplace and don't know their team very well because of a manager a direct manager is the first person a person comes out to in the workplace besides hr probably and if I was asked that question two years ago, I would definitely let my manager come out instead of me because I was so scared about it and I didn't, had no idea how to do this. So if I have an, have an advice for managers, for, um, for people who are, let's say, in charge in the team, if there is a transgender or generally LGBTQ person approaching you, ask them if you will want, if they want you to tell the others, because it's the major stress is wondering if you should tell or not. And when the manager take this, takes this wave off your shoulders, it's really much easier to focus on both business in general and on transitioning and on HR and every procedure. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, I think it's a, uh, it's a great to hear your view and this recommendation. Um, as, uh, yeah, I think this is the, the handbook for, for managers, how to how to support transgender uh, transgender employees, and we couldn't look for more on on today's meeting. Uh, Ma, anything from you? And uh, if there are any last questions, please uh, please raise your hand and put it on the chat. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was attending last week on um, EBA Masters, it's Employee Branding um, Masters <laughs> meeting, uh, and there was Ye Perfect Zainosh, I don't know that some of them probably know, she is working in pro-diversity, and she showed data about increasing productivity when the people came out. It's not just dedicated to transgender, it's dedicated to mm -hmm. all LGBT people plus, LGBT plus. So I think from the perspective of the manager, it could be, um, it, it, it could be in his uh, business to support the person because data show the person who is came out, it's uh, more productive, 25 to 30% percent so it's a big it's a big increase so show uh, your um, employee that you can support and um, be like open be um, of, of course it's 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 hard to say be open if uh, it's the first situation for someone but like be next to the person and uh, go through the process with, with the person like each process so yeah is it something what i want to say and anna change the word with managers please <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, thank you very much, Ma. And actually, yes, uh, there are data that shows uh, that inclusive workplace is the company that earns more because people are more happy to go to the office and they are less happy to take fake sick leaves because they don't feel they are belonging. Um, to sum up what we, what we discussed today, I think that uh, I will use something um, that Ma said to be people oriented. Um, and this is the recommendation uh, for, for the employers to, to see us uh, as individuals and support us throughout the way. It can be bumpy and it can be new for all of us, but uh, we can do it together and we are all stronger together and diversity is, and inclusion is something that we will all benefit from uh, in every term, in short, long term, short term and in all of our lives. So I would like to thank you all for, for joining today's session. Thank you uh, Ma, thank you Arthur and thank you Daria for being uh, brave and sharing your stories and uh, I'm really happy that uh, I've got the pleasure to lead that uh, panel. Shimon, thank you for, for the um, opening uh, field of knowledge and um, Anna for taking care of uh, organizing it from the ARG Center's perspective uh, with Diversity Hub. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.